let's say that we have two people that go to a restaurant and they go to the same restaurant the same night together as they order their food the food just takes a little bit longer than expected to arrive to the table maybe it takes really long like way longer than they've ever experienced before but once they get the food it's amazing and it tastes better than almost any meal that they've ever had one of them could be the negative person who decides to devalue the positives and and for that person they might refer to that restaurant as the restaurant where the food took ages the other person might be the one who devalues the negatives so they kind of blow past the fact that it took ages and they focus on the amazing food and so they will refer to the restaurant as the restaurant with the amazing food we all know someone who can turn any positive into a negative this would be the pessimist or as they most often like to be referred to themselves as the realist and the problem with this is that like the buddha once said with our thoughts we create the world so that means that if you're constantly looking for the negatives or the worst case scenarios then that becomes the world that you live in no matter how useful that can be you're essentially training yourself to find the negatives even if it's in a sea of positives a sort of apocalyptic twist on where's waldo do this for long enough and you become the type of person that will bring up the negatives in any sort of situation and rarely or never the positives for instance it would be the type of person where on a beautiful sunny day they will say something like yeah but the wind is really cold or yeah but the cars from the road that's really loud so that otherwise it would have been a perfect day if it wasn't for that it would be perfect the duality mindset is basically the awareness that everything that happens to us can be viewed from either a positive or a negative perspective and it's completely within your own control to choose which aspect, which perspective you choose to focus on. So an example of this from my own life was this past summer when I was about to launch the boat for the summer season, like put it in the water. Now, what I didn't know at that time was that this was about to be the start of an entire summer of just engine problems and trying to fix something on the boat that I was unable to fix myself and so at first I was very much stuck in the mindset of just like why could this not just work and why did this have to happen right now and why did it have to happen to me but very quickly within just like one or two days or a couple hours I don't quite remember I decided to actively like shift my own mindset and started looking at it from a different perspective so I started thinking like, what if this would have happened at a worse time? Like, would, would there be a worse time that this could happen? And then I realized like, yeah, actually imagine if it would have happened when I was like out to sea and there was like waves building and that would have been way worse. And that genuinely shifted my mindset from this like, why is this happening to sort of a gratitude towards the situation, which sounds kind of strange, but it really did because i really did realize like okay this is good that this has happened now because this makes sure that i can fix it so that it will be more likely for the boat to be safe once i'm out to sea and this really is the power of that duality mindset or being aware of that kind of duality where every situation is neither inherently negative or positive it's all about like what aspect of it you choose to focus on and it's not like the negative aspect all of a sudden disappears and doesn't exist anymore and it becomes less true or whatever it's just that like through focusing on the positive aspects of the situation i changed my perspective on what had happened and it kind of spilled over into other things as well because i started seeing other positives related to this situation which was that I realized that okay I'm spending a lot of time now learning about the electronics of the boat and like finding things out and understanding the engine a lot better where 
I would have never really done that unless I would have been forced to, unfortunately. So that was a positive of the situation as well that I started realizing. And I don't really remember when this whole thing sort of clicked for me the first time, but ever since it did, I've started to realize the impact that negative people have on their own worldview. Which again comes back to the idea of the Buddha quote, with our thoughts we create the world. It means that anything that happens to you is neither negative or positive, but it is within your own control to choose which one of them it is based simply on what you choose to focus on. So a really extreme example of this would be pain. I think most of us will agree that pain is negative and pain could probably even be mistaken as inherently negative, but that's not quite true. And an example of why pain isn't inherently negative is if you take the inverse. So what if you didn't feel pain at all? Some people will have this condition where they don't, don't feel any pain and they will tell you, or if you search it up on Google, you'll find that it is a very dangerous condition to have because pain is very useful because it tells us to stop doing something that is painful. So a person that doesn't feel pain, they will basically keep running even if their leg is broken, they will keep running until they fall over and then they'll look down and realize that their leg is broken. That is one of the benefits of pain. And you could even take it to things like if you imagine stubbing your toe on a table leg or something, like that would be something that you feel is just like there's no positives in that. There's no way to look at that as a positive thing. But there's also the almost Goggins-esque approach to pain where you could view it as a chance to strengthen your mind and not lash out, not do all those things that you'd probably regret afterwards. Okay, even I am struggling not to roll my eyes as I say that, but I'm keeping it in the video because the more that I think about it, the more I realize that no matter how much I want to roll my eyes at that idea, I can't really get away from the fact that it would be kind of good. And if I could truly reframe pain in that sort of way, then that would be very useful and it would be an opportunity for self-mastery. And it's something that if I could truly like change the way that I react in those situations, that would spill over into other situations where I might react emotionally or lash out. And that would be beneficial for everyone around me. So I'm keeping that in the video. But I think the reason why I want to roll my eyes to that idea is that I think most of us, I assume because I feel this way, associate that type of positive th thinking with some form of delusion where you're pretending that something really negative is actually really positive and you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you feel like oh my nose is too big but you're telling yourself that no my nose is perfect i love my nose and that doesn't work i think that works probably just as well as playing hide and seek with yourself you're probably not going to be able to trick yourself and you are hopefully going to know where you are hiding so basically you can't take something negative and just make that negative a positive but you have to reframe the way that you look at that negative and that could make it a positive positive. and I think the first step here is to just build awareness of negative thought patterns so basically trying to catch yourself as you're thinking negatively about something and trying to question those thoughts question if is it actually that negative maybe let's say that you're going out for a walk and it's cloudy and overcast and you get kind of a little bit upset and maybe you want to skip the walk that day because really what you want to do is you want to go outside and get energized by the sun but the sun's not even out so why should I go outside but I actually read this thing in Leonardo da Vinci's notebook just like a couple days ago where he talks about this exact thing where he goes outside and how much he appreciates overcast weather because the overcast of the cloud cover makes the light a lot softer on people's faces so it makes everyone's faces more beautiful so he really showed some sort of appreciation for cloud cover which would normally not be what people do and all of that is just based on a different perspective or a different outlook on 
overcast weather. And that's something that you can do with anything and you can find an aspect of it that might be positive. Maybe you don't care that much about how people's faces look uh, because you're not a painter and you're not going to paint them, but maybe the cloud cover means that you can take the walk through the forest because you normally don't walk through the forest because you want to catch as much sunlight as possible. But since it's overcast, you don't really care that much. So you might as well walk through the forest. And that gives you a lovely walk through the forest instead. And I don't think none of these are new ideas. I just think it's really good to kind of rehash them and keep them at the forefront of your mind constantly. That's something that's been very useful for me personally. And an example of why I don't think it's very new, it's because Marcus Aurelius' most famous quote, the obstacle is the way, I think is completely related to this exact topic. Now this quote, the obstacle is the way, has become almost like a personal mantra to myself, mostly because it's so short and it's so simple and it's so easy to kind of understand what it represents. So now anytime I go through something that's seemingly bad, I remind myself that the obstacle is the way and so this bad thing is the way. And it's very interesting looking back at my life and looking back at things that I've gone through because everything that I can think of and every obstacle that I've had to face have had some sort of positive outcome at the end. And so now anytime I go through something that's hard or seemingly hard in this moment, I try to remind myself to think about like what will be the thing that I will look back on and think that was good because of X. So I put together a bit of a list for the questions that I asked myself in order to be able to do this and turn negative th things into positive things or try to find the positive aspects of negative situations. And so the first one is, can I find an instant positive? This one is pretty clear, just like stubbing my toe, for instance, on a table leg. The instant positive could be like looking at the nail and seeing is the nail busted? If not, that's a positive. Uh, that could be an instant positive. It's just something that comes very easily to your mind that's about the situation. Maybe you won't be able to find one, but if you can find one, that's a really good way to start. The second one is probably the most powerful one, which is what could have happened that would have been way worse. So in the stubbing toe example, that could be the the nail was busted and that would have been way worse if it was. Or in other situations like with my boat, it would have been way worse if I was out to sea and this had happened. The third question is pretty similar, but it's could the timing be worse? So maybe let's say that you break your arm during spring. Well, the timing could be worse if you were just about to go on summer holiday or something and that's when you broke your arm. Maybe now you broke your arm so early in the spring that you have time to recover before summer and you can go swimming without like a thing on your cast. The fourth question, does this open up any new opportunities? This one is a bit eye-rolly, but it's a really good one because things like, let's say that it's a rainy day and you'd plan to go on a picnic outside and now you can't do that because it's raining. Maybe that opens up new opportunities. Maybe that means that you can go to the movies, which you've been wanting to go to for ages and you haven't been able to because it's been sunny. Maybe that's a new opportunity in that situation. Or maybe you break your right arm and so you can't draw with that arm and you wanted to practice drawing. But maybe that means that you can try to learn how to draw with the left hand and you can become ambidextrous, and I think is what it's called. The fifth one is, is there a lesson here that I can use? So depending on the situation, there might be something within what has happened that you can learn from to not repeat it again. Or maybe it can be something you can learn from and use in the rest of your life. The important thing here is to be specific and realistic to the situation. So if you're stubbing your toe on the table, you can't be just like, well, it would have been way worse if an asteroid hit me or if someone came in the door and shot me in the face. Yeah, that would be way worse, but it's not really comparable and it's not really going to work. It's not really realistic. So find things that are situation specific and realistic. 
don't try to play hide and seek with yourself? These are the questions that I came up with, but I'm sure there's like lots more questions and lots of even more useful questions. And so I was thinking if you have those ideas for those type of questions, then feel free to leave them in the comment section because I would really enjoy reading them, first of all. But I also think it's something that would be very useful for other people as well to read any sort of suggestions that you can find in the comments or any thoughts in general that you have on this video. Feel free to leave that in the comments. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you in the next one.